This week's episode of the Five Year Mission Podcast is brought to you by Fansets, the place for amazing pin collectibles. See all the pins and collectibles they have to offer at fansets.com and stay tuned for this week's special Five Year Mission Podcast discount code. Fansets, we are Star Trek. All right, ready? Bye. <laughs> Let me hear the chord. Bye. 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 Now you figured out that this is the Five Year Mission Podcast. You know us as a band. Now you're going to know us as a podcast. Welcome to episode zero. Realize that's not a number, but it sounds weird saying. But welcome to episode zero of the Five Year Mission podcast. For episode zero, we decided it would probably be a good idea just to kind of introduce ourselves. So here we are talking about one of our favorite subjects, ourselves. Hello, everybody. I am Mike Rittenhouse. Uh, I know Andy likes to assume that everyone knows who we are, but in case anyone listening to this does not know, Five Year Mission is a band, uh, foremost, and we write music about episodes of Star Trek. Uh, those, for those of you who do know us, then I, I don't know why you're listening to this, because you know that this is going to be a big waste of your time. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, uh, my name is Mike, and I, uh, I play guitar, and I sing and write songs for the band. I also uh, play bass and keyboard sometimes. Um, Noah? I'm Noah. What do you do in the band? Um, I, I play music and I... <clears throat> That's a fantastic answer, Noah. I write songs. Okay, what else? I sing. Uh-huh. I play guitar. Right play bass uh-huh i fake my way on the keyboard and i play drums patrick who are you hi i am patrick i play the guitar and write songs uh in the band i sometimes play bass guitar and i sometimes play keys i do not play drums because only you do that i do also play the ukulele and occasionally theremin or pianosaurus my name is chris spurgeon and i I'm the leader of the band. <laughs> okay, I'm not the leader, but I do do all the work. Do do, I said do do. <laughs> to be fair. Do you? <laughs> I do all the hard stuff, except for learning the songs. So, what's the question? What do I need to answer here? Who are you, Andy? It's a question I've been pondering for a lifetime already. Now, I'm Andy. And I've written three songs for the band, and I play drums. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible interview. <laughs> and that's Andy. <laughs> <laughs> so now each of us are going to share like a childhood memory or uh, an experience relating to Star Trek. And, uh, uh, and h here comes Noah to interview me. Oh, hey, man. Hey. What's up? Oh, not much. I'm just in here. Um, I, I got this microphone, and I'm trying to make it work <laughs> so that we can... I'm supposed to interview you, I guess, but... Oh, I, don't, cool. I don't care about that stuff, man. Oh, well... Just ask me the questions. That's what I'm doing. Since Noah's a dummy, what is a favorite Star Trek memory for you, Mike? So, uh, when I was... Let's see, what year would that have been? I was probably about 12... I went to the drive-in with my friend and his parents, and we were going to see The Last Crusade, Indiana Jones. And uh, it was uh, there were two movies. The other movie was uh, The Final Frontier. Ooh. No, 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 no. It's I love The Final Frontier. I actually really like that movie. I like it better than several of the other movies. Uh, so we went to the, the theater, and we watched... Indiana Jones and then we watched Star Trek and that night my friend and I stayed up the entire night playing with his G.I. Joes pretending that they were Star Trek characters huh. and I, I had 
I don't remember what character it was, but he looked kind of like Scotty. So I was like playing Scotty, and he, and he my friend, he, he kind of sucked. He was an only child, and he had like every toy ever made. Oh, you told me about that kid. Yeah, and so I was super jealous, but he had the, the G.I. Joe uh, space shuttle. So you have the aircraft carrier. He he did not have the aircraft carrier. That that was like the one thing he didn't have. But he had the space shuttle. So uh, we were playing with that and pretending it was the Enterprise. And so that that was that was really my first that was my first Star Trek movie experience, for sure, and a big memory from my childhood. I, I have a Star Trek memory, a visceral Star Trek memory, burned into my brain when I was little. Um, my parents didn't have cable, so I would have to go to my friend's house next door to watch anything, pretty much. And I remember going over there and walking in the door at the exact moment that the ear slugs, like, leave, check off. You know what's weird? That's my very first Star Trek memory. Really? I really? Don't think, I, don't think I'd, I don't think I'd even seen the series before, and that's the one thing that burned into my brain when yeah, I was a kid. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a burner. Um yeah, I had I had seen Star Trek the original series many many times right. in syndication, but I would never seen the movie because I didn't have cable. <clears throat> so there I was, and I just remember like sinking down into the carpet and and just just going, oh, just watching the rest of that movie and just being completely blown away by it and cursing my parents for not having cable and then having re- recurring nightmares about <laughs> and then being haunted for the rest of my <laughs> life. Yes. Right. How about you, Patrick? If I, want, if I want to go back all the way, when I was a young child, I was into Star Wars and the toys. And uh, for Christmas one year, I got a Scotty action figure from the motion picture. And he was in like a gray uniform, didn't look anything like Scotty from the show. So I actually had no idea what it was for many years. Um, and then I started seeing the show in syndication in the 80s. Um, and I, th- I think Mirror Mirror is the first one I saw where I was really just blown away. Um, and then I went to my first convention around uh, 86, and they were doing some uh, promotional stuff for the next generation. And so I got really super into that. And so those were my formative experiences. So I didn't, I didn't get in this. I wasn't like in Star Trek when I was younger. I had a friend who was really into it. And so he would talk about it and he would show like he had, you know, figures and all that stuff. And I would pretend like I knew what he was talking about because he was my friend and I wanted to be able to share that with him. Not, you know, it's not like I'd seen a bunch of episodes. You know, I I saw the movies as they came out, but I hadn't really seen the episodes so much. So, you know, I can remember Wrath of Khan and, you know, the the. Seti eel, you know, getting put into Chekhov's ear, and that was horrifying. I think, but I think I actually saw four before I saw that one because it was the most mainstream, and I think that was when I was old enough where I could actually go and see it because I think Rathacon was like 82 or something like that. So I was like seven, you know, and so I was still a little young for that. I think when I started to appreciate it more was when. I mean, I was out of college and I went to Vegas with this same friend and we went to the the Star Trek experience at the Hilton and I got to see kind of the timeline that they had laid out and it just kind of became, it just kind of congealed into a world, I think, for me at that time. And then, you know, I was, I started appreciating it more then and just saw more of the episodes, but it wasn't really until the band that I really did the deep dive (laughs) so andy what 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 does star trek mean to you is this how we're is this where we're going here (laughs) uh star trek to me um it is basically it's an allegory if you will a space allegory a spag allegory (laughs) (laughs) No, uh, Star Trek has always been uh, very ahead of its time. It's always been very uh, politically motivated and lots of just morality tales, basically. And it's always just been about a better way of life. And that's 
the whole idea behind Star Trek. I mean, besides, you know, some great action, some great writing, some great character development. Uh, underneath it all, it's always been just a really great show with really great morals and teaches phasers on stun. Phasers on stun. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> because it sounds so final. That was us talking about ourselves. Thanks for tuning into episode zero of the Five Year Mission podcast. What are we going to do from here? We'll have some maybe celebrity interviews, maybe some fan interviews. Maybe we'll diagnose our own songs, figure out how these episodes work, how these songs work. Maybe we'll do some one-star reviews. Maybe we'll do some Star Trek roasts. Maybe we'll do a lot of other things. And we'll figure it out from there. This is, after all, episode zero, and we have no clue what we're doing. No, we do not. But we do kind of know what we're doing when we're making music. So if you're interested in that, you should definitely check out our YouTube channel or follow us on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. If you search Five Year Mission on any of those, we should be the first thing that comes up. If you want to send us any kind of uh, messages or feedback on this podcast or our music or just want to talk to us about anything in general, you can email us at fiveyearmissionband at gmail.com. Now tell them about our sponsor, Andy. This week's episode of the Five Year Mission Podcast has been brought to you by Fansets. Whether you choose to wear them or display them, there is something for everybody, ranging from the Star Trek universe to DC to Harry Potter and beyond. An unbelievable 20 new pins from Fansets made their debut at STLV this year. Wish we could have been there. And they are all amazing, including the Women of Trek collector set, including Lieutenant Uhura, Dr. Beverly Crusher, Counselor Deanna Troy, Major Kieran Norris, Captain Catherine Janeway, Sub Commander T'Pol, Commander Michael Burnham, the Borg Queen, and Edith Keeler. If you don't hear the name of a favorite female Star Trek character in there, don't worry, because this is going to be an ongoing series. As well as new autograph pins featuring Brent Spiner as Data and Doug Jones from Discovery as Saru. Each pin is personally signed and comes with a certificate of authenticity. These are not machine reproductions. All right, fan sets, are you really going to make me drop all that money on a Doug Jones pin? I think you just did. And also new from Star Trek Discovery, all the Season 2 episode pins from Episodes 1 through 4, as well as the Season 2 logo pin. New Trek Tech pins, including the Klingon Batleth and a TNG Phaser Rifle, as well as the new Star Trek Picard logo pin and a half Picard, half Locutus pin. On top of all that, the STLV exclusive Uhura pin sold out within mere hours at STLV. But good news for anyone who was not at STLV but wants to get one of these collectibles, head on over to fansets.com anytime between now and August 31st at midnight Eastern and pre-order this pin. Fansets will only be ordering the number of pre-orders that come through by August 31st, and they will be shipping by mid-October. After August 31st, you will never be able to order this pin again, so do it now. And as a special bonus to our listeners, if you would like to receive 15% off your entire order at fansets.com, simply enter the word five year mission at checkout, all caps, the number five at the beginning. This bonus code will be available until Sunday, September 15th, 2019 at midnight Eastern Daylight Time. Again, enter the code five year mission at checkout. Fansets, we are Star Trek, and we thank our friends at Fansets for sponsoring this week's episode. On the next Five Year Mission Podcast. Earliest Star Trek memories. And favorite convention moments. Come back for episode one.